In this video, I'm going to talk about creating macros and scripts in the language of choice that Home Remote is using, which is JavaScript. Now, if you don't know any JavaScript already, there's some good tools out there, for example, on W3Schools that has an entire JavaScript section dedicated to learning the syntax and providing a lot of good code examples. So to create a macro in our case, we're going to typically be using this for when a button is clicked. If I click on the Amazon button, which is the one I'm going to use for this example, there's three options over here under events for clicked, pressed, and released. Most common we're going to have clicked, so that's the one we're going to create now. You can start creating the JavaScript macro by coming over and clicking on the three ellipse button next to the click command. This is going to open a text editing window, which is actually where we're going to write our JavaScript. To start writing, we just start typing. The first command I'm going to use is alert. Notice that it's all lowercase, which is important in the syntax. Case sensitive does matter. I'm going to also next open parentheses and close it. And this is where our command is going to actually be located. The last thing I'm going to type is the message we want to display. In this case, we're going to type hello world. And I'm going to put that in double quotation marks. The double quotation marks is important because what that's telling the program is to send the literal string and letters that make up hello world with the exclamation point and the space rather than a variable that might be called hello or world or both. The last step is to create a semicolon at the end of the line which indicates the end of this particular command's parameters. So altogether we start with alert which is the command we want to send. Hello world in quotation marks is the literal string that we want to pass into that command and then the semicolon to finish it off. To save, we're just going to click OK at the bottom. To test it, we can click on Start to do up the runtime. And then we're going to click on the Amazon button to test our script. It's popped up a window that says Hello World within the designer. And this is important because within the designer is not the same as within the application. So where this might be helpful is when you're trying to debug the application because you can pass not only literal string variables, but also uh, internal and external variables into the alert boxes. So you can pop those up at certain times if you're working on like an if-then script or something like that where it might be helpful for you as a developer. So to edit the script we're going to hit stop and then we're going to go back into the triple ellipse button again. This time instead of alert we're going to use one of the built-in commands that the developer has created for us. We're going to start by typing app, A-P-P, this time with a capital A and the, the app code is short for application and this is all of the commands that the developer has actually set out and made available to us for modification. By clicking period you're going to see a window come up and if you're familiar at all with Visual Studio or most other programming editors you're going to recognize this. This is what's called IntelliSense and what this is doing is displaying for you all of the available commands at this point within the APP uh, command module. So for app, we only have these commands available to us, starting with delay and ending with toast. To select one, I can either double click on my mouse or use the down arrow to just scroll through and, until I'm sitting on the one that I want. To select it, all I'm going to do on my keyboard is click tab and it'll type it in, including the correct punctuation and capitalization. Not only does this save time, it also saves errors and it restricts you to only the commands that are available for that particular module. So our command now is app period show toast and then we've still got the hello world in the little string. That's still the text that we're passing into this command. We're going to click OK to save again and let's test it out. So this time when we click the Amazon button, it's going to display it within the runtime. And this would be really helpful to give your users input uh, or feedback rather that way like for example if you were changing rooms or if you were creating a mute functionality that you could not only mute the TV but also let the user know that the TV has been muted and you can pass uh, literal strings as well as internal and external variables into this as well and we'll show some examples of that later on. So at this point you've written your first JavaScript macro and attached it to a button and that's all for this video. We'll see you at the next one.